In this video, I'm going to discuss transport of ions and molecules into or out of cells across the cell membrane. This is going to be dictated upon a number of factors, but it is either going to be known as passive transport or active transport. Just so we're clear, these are not the only forms of transport across cell membranes, but these are the ones we're going to cover in this video, and they are fairly significant probably the most dominant forms of transport across membranes. My name is Matt Halter, teaching human physiology. It is Tuesday, June 9th. Passive transport does not require energy because whatever is moving across the cell membrane is moving down their chemical gradients or down their concentration gradients. They are moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Active transport, on the other hand, requires energy because it is moving things against their gradients. So we'll take a look at both of those. There are two forms of passive transport, simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. Simple diffusion requires no channel proteins. Things are small enough or permeable across the cell membrane to do so without a channel. Keep in mind when we're talking about a cell membrane, we're talking about that phospholipid bilayer that has the amphipathic molecules, the um, phospholipids in it, that have a polar region and a nonpolar region. And that's going to influence what can easily pass through the cell membrane and what cannot. Simple diffusion does not need a channel. Facilitated diffusion does need a channel. They are both passive. They are both moving high to low. The only difference is what needs a channel and what doesn't. If we take a look here at simple diffusion, we can look at substances like oxygen and carbon dioxide. These are two molecular gases that are super small, and they can easily slip through the cell membrane. The only other type of molecules that can move directly into a cell or out of a cell without the need for a channel are lipid-based molecules. Estrogen is a great example of that. Estrogen can move into or out of cells without a channel. Simple diffusion, high to low, without a channel. Facilitated diffusion, on the other hand, it is passive, it's moving high to low, but due to the polarity or charge of the entity moving, it requires a channel. Sodium, moving high to low, requires a channel. Glucose, which is a polar molecule, requires a channel. And potassium, which is a cation, a charged ion, positively charged ion, needs a channel. Facilitated diffusion requires channels. It's a passive process. No energy is required. Active transport, on the other hand, requires energy. It does work to move things against their gradients. So if we look here at sodium, as we suggested earlier, there's always a higher concentration of sodium outside of cells than inside of cells. So if we ever wanna move sodium out of a cell, that requires work in the form of energy. And there certainly are times where our cells do move sodium outside of the cell against their gradients. So to move sodium out of the cell, that requires work. There are two forms of energy that active transport utilizes. One is chemical energy, generally in the form of ATP, which we will talk about extensively, and kinetic energy. And we'll talk more about kinetic energy, but kinetic energy is the energy of motion. And we can, or the body can, cells can, move substances against their gradients by coupling that with another ion or molecule that's moving down its gradients. When things move down their gradients, they create kinetic energy. Don't worry too much about that energy aspect right now, but just please understand active transport moves things against their gradients. It requires work in the form of energy, kinetic energy or chemical energy. That's it for this lecture. We'll talk about more forms of transport like co-transport, antiporters, symporters, 
which parlay into what we just discussed here. We'll also talk about endocytosis and exocytosis. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day.